Okay, so in this video we are looking at finding the equation of a straight line. This is something that you will do frequently throughout the Maths Methods course, not necessarily within a linear coordinate geometry topic, but as part of lots of other things. Okay, um, so the following are common forms for equations of a straight line. We have our intercept or general form, ax plus by equals c, or some people write that as ax plus by plus c equals zero. Now, in that form, a, b and c have no direct link to the graph, and, but this is the easiest form from which to calculate x-axis intercepts, uh, or both, sorry, both axis intercepts, um, when we have a quick review of sketching um, linear graphs in a couple of videos' time, we'll, we'll have a look at that. Um, the most common form that you would be comfortable with is gradient intercept form, y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept. So that obviously tells us quite a bit about the graph. However, when you're sketching a graph, you always need to mark both axis intercepts, so you still need to calculate the x-intercept. Um, the gradients, you know, okay, yes, it tells you kind of which direction your line should be going in, but it's not that helpful in the sketching of the graph. Um, uh, generally speaking, if you're being asked to find the equation of a line, I would say, unless you're specified to a diff with a different form, this would be the form I would give the answer in. Okay, you can use any of these three forms to start to try and find the answer, but I would simplify it to get it to this form. And that's the thing, sometimes people get confused by the fact when a question says, you know, find the equation of a line giving it in this form, and they then try and start with this form. If it's easier to start with this form and rearrange it at the end once you've got the answer, fine. Um, the third version is gradient point form, and this is simply a rearrangement of the gradient formula. Okay, um, and I, this is my preference when I'm finding the equation of a line, unless I have the y-intercept, in which case I would go straight to this. If I just have gradient and a point um, that isn't the y-intercept, I would use gradient point form. Here's the coordinates of the point, x1 and y1, and here's the gradient. All your information goes straight into the equation, then you simply tidy it up and get it into this form. Okay. Um, I'll do a couple of examples using both this because I know students tend to lean towards this because they're most comfortable with this um, and using this. Both work, you essentially do the same algebra, I just feel like this is a more streamlined process. Um, yeah, so again, you, you want to be flexible depending on the information that you've got and that's where it's important too that you need to actually take a moment to look at what information you have. Sometimes students miss the fact that they've actually been given the y-intercept and they do a whole lot of calculation when they could have just written the answer straight down. Um, and example one is going to demonstrate that for us precisely. So find the equation of the line with a gradient of 3, so we've got gradient, that passes through the point 0, 7. Now 0, 7, if it's got a 0, x coordinate, that's the y, that's the y intercept. Okay, So noticing these things, so that's a y intercept, so that means that c must be 7. So immediately we can write, we're going to go straight to here, we know the gradient and the y intercept, we can just write down the equation. So therefore the equation is y equals 3x plus 7. Okay, Not wasting time subbing in this point and solving for c, you know what c is, it's 7. Okay, example two, find the equation of the line that passes through the points 0, 5, that's a y-intercept, and 6, 7. Give your answer in the form ax plus by equals c. Okay, let's not get ourselves thrown by this. We'll manipulate to get our answer to look like that, that's fine. But I've been given the y-intercept, I can easily calculate the gradient from two points. So I'm going to start with the form y equals mx plus c, then I'm going to manipulate it to this form. Okay, so we need to calculate gradient first, rise over run. 7 minus 5 over 6 minus 0, so that's 2 on 6, which is a third. So we've got gradient and y-intercept, so c is 5, and so therefore our equation is y equals 1 third x plus 5. One reason this form is used is often to avoid fractions. So whilst I could just say it's a third x plus y equals 5, conventionally in this form these numbers would be integers, not fractions. So I'm going to multiply everything by 3. So I'm going to have 3y equals x plus 15. And so now it is going to be, uh, which way around am I going to do it? We could either write it as negative x plus 3y equals 15 or x minus 3y equals negative 15. Either of those is fine. They're the same. They're both in that form. Okay. Example 3. Find the equation of the line that passes through these two points. 
Okay, neither of those points is a y-intercept, so I'm not going to use y equals mx plus c. I'm going to use gradient point form, but I'm going to need to calculate the gradient first. So gradient, rise over run, whichever way you prefer to do it, minus 5 minus 3 over has to be 8 minus minus 2. So that's negative 8 over 10. So that's negative 4 fifths. Okay, so I like to use, I'll do it with gradient intercept form um, in a second, but I like to use this form, y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. Okay, so the, you can pick whichever point you want. I'm going to use the point with the smaller values. So the y coordinate of the point is going to go in here, the x coordinate of the point is going to go in here, and the gradient is going to go in here. Okay, so all, all the information can go straight into the equation. So it's y minus 3 equals negative 4 fifths times x minus minus 2, so it's x plus 2. And then it's simply about rearranging to make y the subject. Just going to focus on the right hand side for a minute, expand that out. Minus 4 fifths x minus 8 fifths. And y is minus, sorry, minus 4 fifths x minus 8 fifths plus 3. Now 3 is 15 fifths, so that's going to be minus 4 fifths x, uh, negative 8 fifths plus 15 fifths is plus 7 fifths. Um, I would probably leave it in that form, but yes, you could multiply everything by 5 and say that that's 5y equals negative 4x plus 7, um, and so it's 4x plus 5y equals 7. That's the correct answer to the question. But as I said, unless it gives you a specific form, for your equation, I would generally give my final answer in gradient intercept form, so y equals mx plus c. Okay. Example 4, find the equation of the line that passes through the point 1, 3 and is parallel to y equals negative 2x plus 7. Okay, y equals negative 2x plus 7 has a gradient of negative 2. Parallel means that we have the same gradient, okay, so our line is also going to have a gradient of negative 2. We've got the point 1, 3, which is not um, a y-intercept. So again, actually, I'll do this one in two different ways. Sorry, I was going to do the previous one in two different ways. I'll do this one in two different ways. I would use y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. I usually wouldn't write out this line. I'd just put the numbers in straight away. So that's going to be y minus the y-coordinate of my point, which is 3, equals the gradient times x minus the x-coordinate of my point. Expand out the right-hand side and add the 3 across. If you prefer y equals mx plus c, you don't know what c is, but you do know what the gradient is, so you would start with this. Then you would sub in the point, 1, 3. So when x equals 1, y equals 3, 3 equals negative 2 plus c, and c equals 5, and therefore then y equals negative 2x plus 5. I just find this a more disjointed process. You sub in your gradient, then you sub in your point, then you solve for c, then you have to put it all back together for your answer. Whereas here, you sub all your information in and you just rearrange it. Okay, I just find it's a more streamlined process. But both work, both get you to the same place. You actually do all of the same maths. When you expand out the brackets, you'll do this same multiplication, even if those numbers are, if, they're, if it's an ugly multiplication in this version, it'll be an ugly multiplication over here as well. Um, and then when you have to add the 3 on at this point, you know, the add 3, you have to do that. That happens here when you add the negative 2 and the 3 together to get the 5. So even if the, um, if the equation involves ugly fractions, which actually if we'd done it this way we would have had ugly fractions, we did, but we would have ugly fractions in the y equals mx plus c version as well. Okay, You do the same maths, it's just about what you write down and how you write it down. Okay, example 5, find the equation of the straight line which passes through 2, 4, so not a y-intercept, and is perpendicular to the line with equation negative 2x plus 3. Okay, so the gradient here is going to be the negative reciprocal, so that gradient's negative 2, negative reciprocal of negative 2 is going to be positive 1 half, and we're going through the point 2, 4. Okay. Alright, so we've got our point and our gradient, y minus the y coordinate of the point equals the gradient times x minus the x coordinate of the point. Expand out the right hand side and add 4. Done. Okay. 
Again, you could do it with y equals mx plus c, so it'd be y equals half x plus c, then sub in the point. and then go back to your equation, put the c back into your equation. It always just takes an extra line or two, I find. Okay, example six. Given that the lines 3x minus y equals 5 and x plus my equals n are perpendicular and intersect at the point 1, negative 2, find the values of m and n. Okay, perpendicular tells us about the... Um, gradient. So I'm going to get this into great, both these equations into gradient intercept form so that I can identify an expression for the gradient. So equation 1 and equation 2. Equation 1 is 3x minus y equals 5. So if I add y and take away 5 that tells me that y equals 3x minus 5. Okay. So the gradient of line 1 is 3. Equation 2 is x plus my equals n, so my equals negative x plus n, and y equals negative 1 on m, x plus n on m. Okay, so the gradient of line 2 is negative 1 on m. Now we know that they're perpendicular, so we know that negative 1 on m has to be the negative reciprocal of 3, negative 1 third. And so therefore, m must be 3. Um, so then once we've got m has to be 3, we now know that equation 2 is x plus 3y equals n. And we know that it goes through the point 1, negative 2. So if we sub that in, when x equals 1, y equals negative 2, that's going to enable us to work out what n is. 1 minus 6 equals n, and so n must be negative 5. So thinking about you're know, getting them into gradient intercept form so you can compare the gradients and use this perpendicular fact. Then once you've found m, you can sub in your point to find what n has to be. All right, and the last thing I want to look at here is perpendicular bisectors. So the perpendicular bisector of the interval AB is the line that is perpendicular to AB and bisects A and B, AB, sorry, that is it cuts it in half. So in the diagram over here, the red line is AB. The perpendicular bisector is going to be at a right angle to that and it's going to go through the midpoint because it's got to cut it in half so that those links are the same. So therefore we need the midpoint. The mistake students make when they're trying to find the perpendicular bisector is they find the perpendicular gradient but then they use point A or B. Okay, And that would only be true if you use point A you'd be finding the equation of that line. If you use point B you'd be finding the equation of that line and it's not bisecting AB so you need to use the midpoint. So we need to calculate the gradient of AB to hence work out the perpendicular gradient. We need the midpoint of AB and then once we've got that we'll, be, we'll have gradient and a point and so then we can go and find our equation of our line. Okay, so the gradient of AB is 3 minus 1 over minus 1 minus 2. So that is 2 over negative 3, so it's negative 2 thirds. Okay, which means that the perpendicular gradient is going to be positive 3 on 2. So that's the gradient of our line. That's the gradient we're going to use. Um, we need the midpoint. Okay, so we're averaging the x-coordinates. So negative 1 plus 2 over 2. And we're averaging the y-coordinates, 3 plus 1 over 2. So that is uh, 1 on 2 and 4 on 2, which is 2. So there's our midpoint. So we've got our gradient and our point from which we can then go and find our equation of our line. Our point's not a y-intercept, so I'm going to use y minus y1, which is 2, equals the gradient times x minus x1, and then we just want to tidy that up. So expanding out the bracket, 3 on 2x minus 3 on 4, and then adding 2. You want to get good at working with fractions if you're not already. 2 is 8 quarters, so we've got negative 3 quarters plus 8 quarters, so that is 5 quarters. Okay. Again, you could get it, give it in different forms. If you multiply everything by 4, 4y equals 6x plus 5, so you could write it as, you know, 
negative 6x plus 4y equals 5 or variations of that but none of that's necessary it's fine to just stop here as I said I would tend to always give my final answer in y equals mx plus c form unless I was told for asked specifically for a different form okay so the work here is a mixture of questions from exercise 2c and 2e again this is a revision period so if you don't need to do all of these questions or you, you Gonna, you know, or question six, for example, where I've only set parts A and B, you're not very good at those and you want to do more parts of that just to practice a bit. That's all part of what you need to be doing at this point, directing your own review so that you are feeling comfortable and competent um, and um, not just competent, but, you know, really quite strong in these skills so that we can use them to underpin everything else moving forward.